How is it going, you lovely lot? Welcome back to Park Supreme. It is the 31st of January in-game. I'm wearing yellow. Can, can you tell what we're doing today? Uh, admittedly, the thumbnail may have given it away. It's deadline day. Last episode, I came in without a plan. Today, we do have a plan. We are going to do deadline day, have a little bit of a review of the squad after deadline day, given the fact we've already played 35 games this year. And then, to cap things off today, Man City away. A rather big game at the top of the Premier League. Before I recap the results and transfers that have already happened, let's run the intro and get right into things. Happy Monday, I hope you're doing amazing. Let's talk results, shall we? I mean, we're in the results business, we need to get results. Have we been getting them? Mostly yes. Of course, last episode, the draw against Arsenal. I don't I don't want to think about the draw against Arsenal. Let's look at the positives. Since then, we've won every game. 1-0 against Newcastle, 3-1 against Aston Villa, 4-1 against Stoke. All of these games I think you'd expect us to win on the face of it. Aston Villa and Newcastle are good teams, but at home, we need to press home our advantage. Into January, you can see here, only two Premier League games played. The first, a 3-1 win against West Brom. We also dispatched of Leicester 5-0. This was a really, really good result. Pietro, I believe, with his first ever career hat-trick. A big moment for the 20 year old. As for other cup competitions, we went into the FA Cup third round and managed to beat Nottingham Forest 4-2 and then we scraped by against Bradford. N not the best results really. And as for Europa League games, 4-1 win against Besiktas was really good. We rotated the team for this game, convincing win here. And in our final game of the group stage, we maintained our clean sweep, winning all eight games, PSV Eindhoven 2 Rugby Town 6. Yeah, a good proper Rugby Town result, this one. Anyway, that is you all caught up in terms of cup competition. One sec. Edit it. Yeah, hello. Edit it. Do, do we have to talk about that? We do have to talk about the EFL Cup semi final. I've hidden it from them. I, okay, I, I we'll talk about it. EFL Cup semi final. <laughs> Not so good. So in the AFL Cup, we're taking on Arsenal. I decided not to do this in an episode because the EFL Cup is not the be all or end all. You know, the Carabao Cup would be a good thing to win. We took the lead in this game really early on. Roger Rojas got it for us. And in fact, we doubled our lead in this game. Not long into the second half, inside the first two minutes, Bolton running forward. He squared it. Rojas grabbed another. I was thinking 2 0 up in the first leg. This feels good. Uh, yeah, it, was, it wasn't so good. Uh, Arsenal bounced back well. Frenesda putting the ball in. Bob Bobbled around a little bit. Her dad couldn't get to that shot from the edge of the box as it went through the crowd. They then grabbed another goal in the 86th minute to draw it all level. At this point, you can imagine, I'm a little bit annoyed, but I'm thinking, well, we've got a second leg. We can go a little bit more attacking because we're the home team. So we did that. And then Sam Fay, you beautiful man, he scored a third goal for us. This goal here, bit of fortune about it. Ramsdale with the initial save. A reco shot was parried. So a 3-2 win in the first leg. Amazing. And then we went and bottled it. And then, yeah, we went and bottled it. <laughs> um, we lost 2-0 to Arsenal. Uh, Ortiz and Holes with the goals for them. Ramsdale man of the match on an 8.3 rating. Look at the stats. We were 3-2 up going into this game. We lost 4-3 on aggregate. Spoilers. Yeah, we're not winning the Carabao Cup this year. Yeah, I didn't want to talk about this for obvious reasons. But you know what? Let's look at the positives. We're still in the FA Cup, although we could still play Arsenal in the next round if they beat Middlesbrough in a replay that they have got to play against one another. Elsewhere, Europa League, we're into the round of 16, so that is a great result there. And in the Premier League, we're in a fight at the top. Ourselves and Arsenal have games in hand on everyone else behind us, although we do still have to play one another. And when you actually look at the points here, you can see we're in our own little league, almost. I want to say we're in our own league. Man City are one point behind us, but they have also played two games more. Fundamentally, though, the aim this year is to get top four football. We are five points in it with two games in hand. You might be beginning to see why now the Man City game we're doing today is rather important. Now, the transfer window did open, and I have actually made two rather big sales. The first, Donovan Twos. The centre-back was unhappy he wasn't getting first-team football. Even with all the injuries and rotation we've been doing, he hadn't really been getting near the first team. So naturally, when Al Fate came in and offered £15 million, I decided to accept it. We signed him for £5 million last January. He played one league game for us. So I feel like to make £10 million profit is nice. And Al Fate, they didn't just take him. They also took, if I can find him in this list of players, 
Gomez, where, where is he? Wesley Gomez, he's at the bottom. Wesley Gomez has also gone to Al Fate. Uh, the 21-year-old Brazilian, uh, alongside Bilardo, kind of a player who I wasn't really sure how much I was going to make use of him. This year in league games, he made one start, five sub-appearances. Didn't play terribly in those games, but when I got an offer of 13.5 million that could rise up to beyond 17 million, I did decide just to cash in on him. You might remember when we signed this guy, there was question marks over his potential. He didn't improve during his time at the club, so I feel like this is kind of the finished product with him. He's just one of those early bloomers who's hit his peak, well, fairly prematurely, you could argue. But either way, £17 million potentially for him is nice. Alongside the twos money, that's a lot of money made. Now, I didn't end up signing a replacement for twos because I didn't think we needed another centre-back. And in terms of kind of the playmaker players, I also decided we didn't really need anyone to replace Wesley Gomez because you might remember Mark Anderson, the young Dane. We signed him in the summer for £8 million. He was due to play at Midtjylland all the way through, I believe, until kind of the end of the Danish season, which runs a kind of alongside the English season. I know a lot of the Scandinavian and Nordic leagues run, you know, through the summer. Denmark's the exception. Either way, I've recalled him back from his loan. He wasn't playing amazing in the Super League, uh, but I feel like in terms of a depth center mid option who can compete for spots, can play a deeper defensive midfielder role, can play attacking midfielder uh, roles for us as well, he's not that dissimilar to what we had in Gomez. In many ways, he kind of was signed as a Gomez replacement anyway, and with the bid for Gomez accepted, he's coming in a little sooner than we expected, has already been playing a bit in the team, improving a lot as well, it has to be said. I'm quite optimistic by this guy. I want to give him a lot of first-team football. So that is you all caught up on transfers that have already happened. That said, there has been a lot of interest in players over the window. We have had some bids for Lucas Schumacher. The highest bid I think we've had was about £4 million. I don't really want to sell him. I have set an asking price of £10 million, although if teams persist and he continues to be unhappy, maybe we look to sell him today on deadline day and just pick up a new backup goalkeeper. Elsewhere this window, Sneddon had a bid from Barcelona. I think the bid was only £30 million, which was below his valuation. I ended up rejecting it. Sneddon had a rough start to things uh, kind of in the first uh, season at the club. Of course, he joined us midway through last year. This year, though, so far, a much improved performance in terms of ratings. He is looking very, very competent at centre-back. I feel like he's also improving a little bit. And the other big-name player attracting interest is Bolton. Of course, we promised him in the summer if a bit of £105 million came in, we'd accept that. Uh, I realise now, I've checked, all the interest has vanished. We did have some rumoured interest of around £60 million for him. Naturally, at that price, I'm not going to sell him. You can see, though, there are a handful of players still wanted by various other clubs. Bellardo is a man I really kind of just want to sell this window. We signed him for £1.7 million, and he does have this really high valuation in game. But to be honest, teams aren't getting anywhere near that valuation I was hoping to get for him. And at this point, if I could just shift him on for £10 million... It'd probably be quite nice. I am actually pretty content as well with the squad in its current form. You can see when you look at the number of appearances made, we have used the full squad really this year so far. Plenty of rotation needed. And of the players down at the bottom of this list, Anderson right at the bottom, you can see with three appearances behind my head. Uh, of course, he's only just joined the club. Sinkule, perhaps the one man who I could maybe look to loan out, but... I don't think I'm going to. So we've got £31 million in the bank. We've also got a transfer budget of £42 million if we want to bring anyone in. That said, I have already agreed two free transfers that will join us in the summer that I'm quite excited about. The first of those is Conor Gegan. He plays alongside Sam Fay in the Scottish national team. 24 years old, has actually fallen out of favour at Rangers over the last few years, but I really like the look of this guy. 38 caps for the Scottish national team, good attacking midfielder, the kind of man who, if I am moving on Bellardo, I think could come in and be a pretty blooming good upgrade on Bellardo. Not quite as athletic, but better mentals and technicals, that is for certain. And the other man I've agreed to sign at the end of his current contract is Kanate. Now, now, I did talk about this guy during the summer transfer specials. 29 years old, Ivorian. By the time he joins us, he is going to be 30 years old. But with his perfectionist personality, some really good current ability as well, I think he could be a fantastic addition to the squad. I think he's joining us on only £60,000 a week as well, which is good. Super consistent, loves important matches, could bring in some marketability as well with £2.4 million. If I wanted to buy him now, it'd cost me £29 million. As good as he is... 
given the fact that he will just be joining us in six months, I don't think it's worth paying almost 30 million to sign him immediately, but he's going to be a really good addition to the squad next year. Okay, I feel like now we've set the state of play, and now I can hit the take part button, everything's going to turn yellow, and suddenly I look colour coordinated. This, this is very exciting. One player I did consider signing this transfer window is Mateus. Uh, he still doesn't want to join me. I mean, I can just make another bid for him, I suppose. Maybe he's changed his mind, like, in the last week since I started talking to him, but... Yeah, uh, he doesn't want to join to me. I have seen comments recently saying, Jack, why don't you just sign all the best Brazilian and Argentine wonder kids? Uh, the answer is, they don't want to join me. That said, if I do nothing else this transfer window, I probably should make sure I sign some youngsters to make the use of kind of the, the young player slots we're given. Really, we're looking for some affordable players with some good potential. Uh, I'm going to look through this list. There's got to be some players out there. I mean, Joshua Paradez here doesn't look awful. 18 years old, Mexican. He's only just turned 18 as well. Um, I just want to check something here. We have currently uh, made three transfers. So we're allowed to make three further under 21 players. I wasn't sure on the exact number. Joshua... Don't think he's worth being one of the three. I think this guy's name would be said Choban or Coban. Uh, maybe you should just call him Cobain like Kurt. Uh, look, this guy, Turkish, youth international, 19 years old, has a release clause of 7.4 million. He looks pretty well-rounded. He lacks consistency, but for that price tag, I feel like you could do a lot, lot worse. We'll, we'll get a scout report on him. I don't like the mercenary personality. That scares me slightly. Yeah, we'll earmark this guy as a maybe. I like the look of his potential. Marcos here plays for Santos. I almost don't want to ruin it because Marcos, Santos, it just sounds like a match made in heaven, doesn't it? 18 years old, Brazilian. This guy is either-footed. He's a striker with 20 determination. Um... Am I weird thinking he looks like a wing back? Am, am I am I overcooking? Not that I need a wing back at all at the moment, but I'm just thinking if you were gonna play this guy anywhere, wing back? Question mark. I mean, I know he can't really defend, but he is 18. I feel like it's probably better uses of 14 million pounds than a striker that's not really a striker. Alain Nembot. Why does Nembot just feel like a fun name? Uh, this guy's 18 years old. Youth international for France in the goalkeeping position. Currently plays for Monaco. He is inconsistent, but I don't actually quite like the look of him. I'm just sat wondering, if I lose Schumacher or if Schumacher tries to force a move on deadline day, would he be a good replacement? Yeah, the, the answer's no, isn't it? I know that answer, you know it too. I probably shouldn't want this guy. I've just upped the age of the player so we could sign a little bit. This guy has a release clause of a million pounds. I mean, do, that is a release clause that's active, right? Yeah, a release clause of a million pounds for this guy. I feel like it's such a low-risk gamble, isn't it? 20 years old. He looks quite good, the young Turkish player as well. I feel like uh, there's some options out there that I could sign who are young players who look good, but they're going to cost an arm and a leg. And if I'm going to sign one of the more spenny options, getting in a million pound bargain could be could be quite smart, couldn't it, really? Uh, yeah, he was... Where was he on the list? He was just here on the list was Eretz. I mean, should, there might be other players around here. I should be hunting this more. Rogerius, Hardy Sommers. I kind of want to sign him just to have another Roger. Um, this guy massively overrated, right, in terms of star ratings. He's good. He's not that good. He's not £28 million good. Alan Jurovic. I feel like I'm signing too many centre mids, but this guy for £2 million would be good. I don't, I, don't need, I don't need more centre mids, do I? I mentioned this in the summer as well. Some of these players I'd love to sign and just make them youth players that play in the youth team. But the issue with a lot of these players is they just want to come straight into the first team and be regulars because of our club reputation. And I really can't guarantee them that. Do I need more strikers? I'm looking at Diego here. We'll ignore the fact that he's not got a proper face installed with the AI face pack yet. We can give him a face. We have the technology. He's quite good, isn't he? He's another Spezia youngster as well. We have signed Pietro from them in the past. He is 18 years old. He looks quite good. I like his physicals. I like the fact he's consistent. He's got good potential. Who wants him? Okay, it's lots of... Bi I want him too. If the big teams want him, I want him. Okay, he has a release clause of 5.25 million that they want me to hit. Uh, yeah, we can pay that. Now, admittedly, if we sign Diego and we sign Ayrton, that is two strikers we're making uh, kind of potential options for us. Although, to be fair with both of them, they can also play centre attack in mid... Kind of. I don't think I'd want to play Diego at centre attack in mid. If I'm going to make another signing, I'm thinking young centre back to replace twos. When you sort our team by age, we've got all these young attacking and kind of wide defending talents who are great. There's no centre back in this list. I want a centre back. 
Apparently this guy's available for free. He's available for free. He's 19 years old. He's Danish. He looks okay. He's not that good, is he? I've been distracted by the fact it's had a zero next to his valuation. Really do need to update my face pack. Von Kahu, though. I mean, what a fun name to say. 18 years old, American. Presumably our secondary nationality. He does. Macau's secondary nationality. I actually love it. He is a centre-back for LAFC. 18 years old. He only turned 18 last month. We're going to get a scout report on him. Do I just get the ball moving on this as a transfer now? Does he want to join us? He's got £6.2 million release clause. I've not scouted him yet. We'll wait for the report to come in before I confirm anything. I'm getting the ball moving on this. I love the look of this guy. Okay, all three bits of players have been accepted. Ayrton here wants to be a squad player. Ayrton, why are you doing this to me? I'll promise him impact sub. You know what? I'll deal with the consequences of my actions later. Want him to sign a long-term deal at the club. Long-term long deal at the club. Come on, four years, sign up. Ayrton, love it. I think with all three of these players, I'm not convinced they're going to walk into the first team by any means. But if we can sign them and then look to just develop them and sell them on for some money, that is not a bad use of our money at all. Especially at the moment where, well, we have these slots that have to be used today otherwise we don't get to use them later on it's not like the younger under 21 transfers roll over if you don't use them so with that in mind i want to get players signed up diego 17.5 thousand pounds a week that is a good salary for you it's not good enough for him okay look i'll give you 20 thousand pounds a week but i'm not giving you the big wage rise after 20 games how does that sound he loves that. And then we have Mr. Vong. I love that Mr. Vong could be amazing. I love the look of this guy. I don't know why I'm calling him Mr. Vong. <laughs> I think it sounds like a Mr. Vet man. I think it's because I'm scared of saying his name and Vong just, it doesn't, it sounds like I'm saying half a name. I guess it would be Mr. Kahu. Kahu? Kahau? Kachow? No, we can't, we can't, I can't turn it into Lightning McQueen <laughs> every time he's on the ball. That would be problematic. Okay, he's agreed to that. We are going to need to wait for the scout report to come in for him. It should come in today on deadline day. Your scouts, they just rush things. I like the idea that on deadline day, the scouts just go on YouTube, you know, search a video, just watch montages of the players playing, and that's how they review them. Empley have made a loan offer for Schumacher. No, no. Horsham have made an offer to loan David Hall from me. You know what? You can have David Hall, Horsham. If it helps you stay up, that's fine with me. If you were wanting a little affiliate update, by the way, Horsham in 13th, Chester in 19th. That's very fun. And as for Carlisle, our League One affiliates, they're actually in the battles for the playoffs. They're on the periphery of it right now, but they're in seventh place. They've been getting, well, some good results out there. And you can see here, their top goal scorer, William Espinosa. This guy's got 17 league goals for them. That just makes me happy. Speaking of young players out on loan as well, Gilliland. Remember Gilliland? Yeah, he's out on loan at Millwall at the moment. He's been playing regular football in the Champions. I'm kind of surprised they're playing him, to be honest. But when they made an offer to loan him uh, over the summer, I decided to take it. The 18-year-old playing championship football is improving quite a lot. Keeping a close eye on this guy's development, I kind of want to bring him back maybe next year and rush him into the first team a little bit. Has some mad potential, liking the look of him a lot. And yeah, good to see him developing well. Who did he say make loan off of it? No, Schumacher is not for loan. I'm going to make this very clear. Unavailable for loan. I'm just looking at other players potentially available for transfer. I did at one point have a look at Alves here. French youth international playing for Real Madrid. He kind of looks like Ferland Mendy's regen in terms of his profile of player. However, I don't need a left back, do I? We've got NDIA. We've got Lee Min. We don't need another one. You might have also noticed Guerrero on the list of players. I'd love to sign Guerrero. I feel like he's not improved that much since he's gone to Crystal Palace. Also, slight concern asking price probably gonna cost us a hundred million pounds oh my word i can't believe it we've got bids for Bellardo. 10 million pounds of Bellardo. i i feel like i've had bids of slightly less than that and rejected them but to be honest my patience is wearing thin he's proven himself to not be premier league quality as far as i'm concerned so I'm going to accept both these offers. If Stoke want him, they can have him. If Nice want him, they can have him. His name's Vong. Kahu Vong. Uh, I'm just going to come up with different movie references for this guy. Uh, we've got the scout report for him. His potential isn't very good. But he is from Macau. And he would just be the emergency centre-back. Oh, he's probably, he's probably not a sensible transfer, and yet I still kind of want to do it. 
I mean, the whole reason I'm doing this transfer, or at least I got the ball moving on it, was so that if I didn't like what I saw in the scout report, I could cancel it. You know what? I feel like the movie quotes would probably drive people insane. Uh, I'm going to cancel this deal. He's not worth six million. I'm sad about it too. I feel like long-term viewers are thinking Jackie's got Macau nationality, so surely you are going to sign him. No, I'm a changed man. Diego, however, is going to be joining us for £5 million. I think that is a really good kind of long-term transfer option. I've already mentioned, but we've got lots of young attacking talent, but there's no harm in having a few more strikers to bring in and flip on for some money. Like I said, we have these transfer slots. We might as well make use of them. Okay, Erton is also joining the club. He expects to be an impact sub. That might cause us some issues, but for £1 million, pounds, it's just a bit of a punt, really, isn't it? And in some other news, Bilardo is leaving the club for £10 million. Pounds. A little bit sad to see him go. I was hoping he might amount to something, but actually, when you look at his development since he joined the club, he's not really changed as a player. So considering we signed him for £1.7 million, pounds, to flip him on for five times that doesn't feel that bad. Slightly concerning, now I've signed Ertz and I'm being told he might not improve anymore. Let, let's hope that's wrong. I don't want to say it too loudly. It does look, doesn't it, when you look at the squad screen, like we've got an abundance of attacking talent, but it's all quite interchangeable in terms of the attacking mids, the strikers and such. Given all the games we have to play, I'm not overly concerned. So currently the first team sits at 26 players. I've still got money to spend if I want to spend it. £46 million, really that should be burning a hole in my pocket. There are more of our players attracting a little bit of interest. Is it bad that I would consider selling Roger Ospina for £60 million? Do I offer him out? He has already provisionally agreed to a new contract at the end of the year, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just going to offer him out and just see if there's any interest. I feel like Roger Ospina is a man that I love, but I feel like of all of our attacking options, he is the one kind of at most at danger of dropping off. Uh, I feel like he's not really improved in recent times either. If I was to get a bit of £60 million, I'd accept it just because I don't think he's actually worth this much, and I feel like as he gets older and doesn't really change as a player... That number's only going to go down. Being honest, I'm just relieved that we managed to get rid of Bellardo. I thought he'd never leave the club. I feel just calm about that as much as anything. Rangers have made a bid for Ospina. They've offered £36 million. Will you do 60? I appreciate that's a bit of a bump up, Rangers. They've offered £49 million. Ah, oh, you know, I feel like this is actually negotiable here. I feel like we can come to an agreement and I hate it. I want £45 million now and £15 million in six months. They've accepted that. I think I have to take it. I mean, when it comes to goal-scoring options in our team, Ospina is one of the better players, but with the emergence of Areco as a regular first-team player who just seems to overperform his attributes with 14 goals this year, I just feel like getting £60 million for your fourth top goal scorer, who's the oldest of the top four goal scorers, it probably just makes sense. If I sell him, I'm going to have so much money to spend. Who am I going to buy in? I mean, here's the thing. Who am I going to buy in? I say. The reality is I've already got Karim Kanate. He is basically the Roger Ospina replacement, isn't he? I mean, he is just better than Roger Ospina. A little bit older, not as good in the air, to be fair, but overall, mental-wise, physical-wise, he's got the edge. The issue that I've got really is that I don't want to be spending £29 million to bring him now. So do I just grit my teeth for six months and suffer without Ospina, knowing that Kanate's joining? I think that might be the play. I do, I do feel like when it comes to striking options, Ospina isn't critical. Amongst a sea of great attacking talent, Ospina's just the one that makes the most sense to sell. I feel, I feel like this is the right thing to do. Assuming the deal is going to go through, there's only an hour left. Can they, can they hurry up and get the paperwork done, please? Please tell me this deal's actually going to go... Imagine if it doesn't go through now. Unless, does the Scottish window end like a day different? I'm mashing continue here. I realise we're at a point now where it's too late for me to sign anyone, even if I wanted to. I think Ospina's going. I, I assume he's going. Deadline day's passed. It's not told me the deal's fallen through. So I guess Scotland has a different deadline day, because reasons. Uh, by the way, wage expenditure in the Premier League. We have the lowest wage spend. Yeah, we're doing well. Top deadline day deal, by the way. Etienne Tipple, this guy, I looked at him at one point. He didn't want to join me. Uh, signed for Chelsea from Porto, was it? Yes, yeah, £64 million for him. He's quite good. I don't know if he's £64 million good, mind you. Right, we've got Man City to play in a moment. I'm still sat thinking, is Ospina going to be here? Maybe Ospina will be here for the game against Man City. That'd be fun. This deal is definitely ongoing, isn't it? I don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why. I, I guess the Scottish transfer window just ends later, but it's making me very anxious not knowing. And suddenly, it's 8pm on the 1st of February. It's time to take Man City on. 
and Ospina still here for the game. I did earlier mention the fact I'm going to do a squad review this episode, and I said I was going to do it after deadline day. Given the fact the Ospina thing's not happened, we'll do a little rundown after this match. In terms of the team, you'll notice here Ospina isn't even in the starting 11. Recently, I have been playing Reco alongside Rojas in the final third. Misiak, of course, we changed his role last episode and he played well, and he had been kicking on nicely. He did, however, get a calf strain recently in a game against Arsenal. Has now missed a lot of first team football. We can see he did a fitness test. Uh, in fact, he didn't do a fitness test. He wasn't ready for it, so he probably shouldn't be on the bench. And Goma, by the way, is back from AFCON, so he will be on the bench. DR Congo, if you're wondering, how did they get on in their most recent kind of African Cup of Nations run? The answer is they won the whole pissing thing. Did, did Ngoma play well in this game? I've not actually checked this game. I don't know what happened in it. Did, did he even play? Ngoma, where art thou? Uh, he was on the bench. <laughs> he didn't get subbed on. He, he was there. He got to touch the trophy. From AFCON bench to Premier League bench. I'm just looking at the rest of the starting eleven, thinking, is there anything I really want to change here? But I don't think there is. What I will just do going into this game is criticise Sam Fay's recent form. He's, he's not been doing well lately. You know, now I've done this chat, surely he'll play well in the game. Let's get into this game and see what we can do. Was the most action-packed deadline day? We signed some good young players. I think the sales that we made are quite sensible ones. Good to get some money for Bellardo. Really good as well to be honest, to just move on off Spina, assuming that deal happens. £60 million. I know he was a useful first-team player for us. I just don't think he's worth that much. And recently, he has just dropped out the first team. Areco has just been too good. The Argentine forward was kind of that punt at the end of the summer transfer window. He's ended up being one of our most dependable players. We might be depending on him here to get some goals because I can't imagine we're going to be able to be resilient to Man City. It's a great tackle initially. And oh my word, that shot hit the crossbar, went into orbit. But fortunately for us, is not nestled in the back of the net. Of course, this is a tricky game. If we want to really make a title push, I feel like a win in this kind of game is huge for that. We're tra trailing down Arsenal, of course, at the moment. We do have games in hand over Man City, but if they were to win here, they would go ahead of us, which is less than ideal. Sam Fay donning the captain's armband and forcing a save out the keeper. For a second, I thought my speech with him was going to have worked wonders. We do still have a corner. By, a we by the way, Areco's crossing is now up to 19. I know, 19 crossing. He's absolutely insane, unfortunately for us. So is Erling Haaland at heading, and he's managed to head that one away. But, well, don't take your seat. It's not over yet. Pietro whips it in. The keeper spills it. Bolton shoots. It's deflected out front of a corner. We are kind of corner merchants, aren't we? Well, I'll open it a minute. We love a good corner here. Our fridges, they're full of mullers at the trading ground. Rojas inside Faye goes down in a heap. And I feel like Man City, yeah, they've composed themselves. They've shown some reasonable organisation there. They've fended off the danger for now. 25 minutes into this game, very, very even stat-wise. City are edging out possession, but they're having a lot of it deep in their own half. They're playing this 4-3-3. It's quite a superstar team, isn't it? We Drago, Fatty, Foden, Haaland. Yeah, sc scary team they've got. Might be a scary team. I'm not scared of them yet. Uh, we've done okay in this game thus far. We're quickly approaching halftime. A draw in this kind of game, I wouldn't view as a disaster. Obviously, you could argue we're in a title fight, given where we are on the table right now. But the main aim of the game this year... Is Champions League football. Snedden, by the way, massive block in the middle. We've had some chances from corners. Now Man City maybe got a chance to repay the favour. Whipped in. We drag goes under it. Bolton gets it away. Breathe a sigh of relief. I think we're going to get in at half-time at 0-0. When you look at the game, stat-wise, not been a classic. One shot on target for either team. Uh, t I tell a lot. Man City had one more shot on target before the end of the game. Still, not a classic. Not going to throw a water bottle, but you know things are serious because my hands on, are going to be on my hip. Uh, we have to be better in front of goal. Simple as that. Areco, by the way, the man who I'm really talking to, just composed. You know what? If it works for him, it works for me. Okay, Areco, I mean, he's composed. He's whipping in a corner. Can he make something magical happen? Snedden heads over. I feel like corners are the name of the game. I'm trying to get revenge today for when Man City beat us with corners at the start of the year. Remember that game? I'm still annoyed about that game. 1-0 up, 20 minutes left, they scored two corners, completely against the run of play at Butlin Road. Now we're trying to do it to them in their own back garden. Unfortunately for us, Rico Lewis is on the wing, and Ansu Fati has, well, some support being offered. Back, Fati shoots... Just wide. Everything's fine. I'm calm. We've got a few more players than I'd like on bookings. I think I'm going to make some changes here. I kind of want to take off Rodriguez, but no, I shouldn't. Fawns, I'm going to take off for Zhao Victor. Elsewhere, I think it's time for the live commentary debut. Mark Anderson. 
I love the look of this guy. He looks like the makings of a really, really great attacking midfielder or maybe even a deep line playmaker in our system. Going to bring him on. Oh, Roger Rojas hasn't played well. The temptation to bring on our speeder now for kind of a fond farewell is real. But I do just want to stick with our current team for a short while. Fawns going for his lap around the pitch. He's been subbed off and left at the nearest point of exit. Look at that. He's going for a little walk around the edge. I really should be focusing on the games. Also, Pelagata. Pietro's really doing the long way around the ground, isn't he, here? Right, let's like, head in the game, Jack. We, we're playing football manager. We're not watching the players we just subbed off walk laps around the pitch. We dre a go to Bajetic. Played wide to Pellegrino. Also, that pronunciation was awful. We'll move on. Pellegrino's bringing it forward. Haaland's in the middle. I don't like it. It's Erling Haaland. Is VAR going to bail me out? I'm hoping it is. I feel like he was onside. Do me a favour, VAR, please. It's not done me a favour. It's 1-0 Man City. Pressure had been mounting, to be fair. And yeah, it, it's Erling Haaland. It's that man, the scary big bloke. I feel like you can do anything you want in Football Manager. It's very difficult to stop a player as good as ha Erling Haaland scoring, isn't it? Okay, look, we find ourselves a goal down. We're going to dust ourselves off. Let's get ready to rumble. Round two. We can make something happen here. Sam Faye down the wing, looking to pick out Rojas. That pass was absolutely shocking. It was an absolute hospital pass. But now we are going to try and press and force an issue. Gvardiol going back to the keeper. I thought for a moment they were going to turn over the ball in a very silly position. To be fair, they still could do that. We are working hard to try and force an error out of Man City, but they are going to play it out from the press. And Fati laying it from one side to the other to Foden. Pellegrino already has one assist to his name, the left back. Now getting down the byline. Players to aim for in the box of a cross. Bolton blocks the initial ball, but it's back with Phil Foden. Options in the middle. It's that man again. It's, it's, him, it's him again. It's 2-0. That one doesn't need review by VAR. As high as we are in the league right now, I think it's quite apparent when it comes to games like this one. We just don't quite have the quality, do we? We, do, we just don't quite have it in our tank to take on a superstar team like Man City. I mean, just as a reminder, lowest wage spend in the Premier League. So maybe we're doing okay to only be two goals down. If we get one goal back, I'll start to believe that we could make something happen. But truthfully, at this point in time, it's difficult to see a way in which we score two in this game. We've been lacking a lot in this game, but if we could shift momentum, it could be huge. Lee Min, the left back, is dispossessed. We Drea go, winning the ball back. The German centre mid lays it towards Erlen Haaland, who, of course, is on a hat-trick in this game. I brought on Jal Victor to add some, well, solidity at the back. It's not really happened, has it, so far? But, well, let's try and get something happening here. Anderson on his debut. The young Dane... And uh, I wanted to believe he'd score there, but deep down in my heart of hearts, I knew he wasn't finishing that. He, he's not that kind of player. Areco, though, this man, this man can cross. This man can make things happen. Faye, Areco. I don't know if... The, is this off the training ground? Training ground? Question mark? Training ground? How did he miss the second shot there? How... I, <laughs> I don't. I know it's Rodriguez. I know he's our centre back. The initial effort was fine. It was on target. It forced a save. The keeper was sat on his bum and he's blazed it over. I almost subbed off Rodriguez because he was on a booking, but then I thought, you know what? I don't want to disrupt my centre back setup. I'm beginning to think now I should have subbed him off. Rodriguez, Jal Victor. I mean, it's a sign of life, I suppose. Ross, can you show us more than a sign of life? He can. Anderson, by the way, the new player. What a pass that was. Marky Anderson, he came from Midgerland, and now he's going to lend our attack a hand. Look at this ball. Wand of a right foot, plays it perfectly weighted. Keeper came out. Rojas got there first. The ball's in the back of the net. It's 2-1. There's still 25 minutes left. I do feel like whenever we get a corner in this area and a reco's the man over it, there's just an expectation that something magical is going to happen. I Probably I should temper my expectations. I know he has 19 crossing. I know I've not mentioned it that much. He has 19 crossing, by the way. Can't score every corner. Okay, there's 12 minutes left in this game. Some legs are tiring. Areco's had not the best of games. I'm going to bring in Roger Ospina there. Sam Fay also struggling for fitness. And Goma on Ucom. I do have one last sub. If I want to make it. Ashley Phillips. I might live to regret this. Do I want to bring in Ashley Phillips? Now, you know what? There's no point in just subbing a centre-back. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to be brave. Mosquera on you come, my friend. Bolton hasn't had the best game at right back today. Want to just get some fresh legs into the wider areas if we can. I'm going to go for a shouty shout to demand more. Five minutes of added time. It's been a really even game. Can we make something happen? Oh, my God. The, the hope is there. And Goma, it's a corner. Go short. Mosquera, the subs linking up. Anderson, he's already got an assist. Could he get a goal it would have been magical wouldn't it it's gone wide 
I don't know why I believed. Five minutes of added time. Is there to be any late drama? We have pushed Man City hard, but for a second time this season, we are going to succumb to a 2-1 defeat. And I do feel like we can feel a little hard done by with that one. I'm proud of the efforts of the players. You know, we went into that game as underdogs. We pushed them hard. Sadly, it wasn't enough. With that result there, we're two points behind Arsenal, who now have a game in hand on us. We're also two points behind Man City. Albeit, we're not going to overreact because we've still got two games over them. And off the back of the game, the bad news gets better. I was going to say badder. This isn't bad news. It is sad news. Don't get me wrong, but some sad news is good news. Roger Ospina, £60 million. Pounds. £60 million for Roger Ospina. I feel like that's just too much money to turn down. In this universe, Rangers have a tycoon owner. I love Ospina. We brought him in for £1 million. Pounds. We're selling him on for 60 times that. Yeah, I, it's, I'm doing it. You can't talk me out of it. I've already hit accept anyway. Would be very interested to know what you make of this sale. This is one of those ones where just be, with the abundance of attacking talent that we've got, I feel like we can manage without him, especially with Ertan coming into the team. And knowing as well that we've got Kanate joining us in the summer, this guy is already an upgrade on our speeder. Is it going to make the next couple of months before the end of the season a bit tricky? Maybe, but I still feel like we've got goals in our team. I feel like it's not like we're a one-man band and we're selling our main goal scorer. It's like we're selling the backing singer. So with the departure of Ospina and that result against Man City, we will do just a little rundown of the team. Players to talk about, players I'm happy with, some I'm less so. Speaking of a more disappointing player, perhaps Haddad in goal. His ratings in the Premier League have been disappointing. In the Europa League, he's played much better. I do actually feel like 22 goals conceded in 20 isn't actually that awful by our goalkeeper standards at the very least. Um, yeah, for £35 million, have we got bang for our buck? Maybe a question mark over that there, but it's easy to forget. He's 23 years old. His valuation's high. I don't feel like he's had any absolute disaster classes yet. There's not been any goals where we've seen him concede it and you go, oh my word, like what's he doing? Although I feel like that is just less common in newer football managers. Across the back line, I feel like we have now settled into this being our setup. Bolton has had a good time so far at right back. Do want to sign him on to a new deal if we can. Um, he's currently unhappy at the club because he wanted to be sold and we told him if we got £105 million, we'd sell him. That is still a promise that I've kept him at the moment because of that promise. He doesn't want to sign a new deal. We need to extend his contract really by the summer. Over at left back, Lehman's not been exceptional this year. Had loads and loads of assists last year. This year, slightly quieter, but defensively still very, very solid. And I feel like defensively, we are looking better this year. Rodriguez has come into the team. I've been training his quickness because that is a concern of mine. He's not been improving that much, but at 22 years old, he still looks like a really good option for us. Has broken into the Argentine national team. And alongside Sneden, who is a quicker centre-back, I feel like They've got a good little partnership brewing. I think it's been kind of the best defensive partnership we've had so far in the Premier League. Albeit that is only kind of an 18-month sample. But these two guys at the back look very good. Sneddon, I've been really impressed with so far. If you believe star ratings, the two weak links in the team at the moment are Fawns and Riviere. Fawns, I don't feel like, is the long-term super great, amazing option at defensive midfielder. But at least for now, he is doing a job for us. As for Riviere, he is just a perfect fit for our current role in the team of kind of the deep line playmaker. Longer term, maybe we look to upgrade him, but I feel like Fawns alongside him is kind of the bigger cause for concern. I say cause for concern, Fawns isn't playing badly. Defensive midfielders just don't get ratings in football manager this year. He's actually on a 7.0. He's doing fine. In the attacking midfield area, Faye and Misiak are the go-to options. As we discussed last episode, that change in role to Misiak, I think is hopefully going to help his output. Still been struggling with injury quite a lot. Faye, on the other hand, has been scoring goals for fun. Nine goals, seven assists. A really, really good return from him in his second season in the Premier League. In fact, you can see here, he's already matched his returns for last year. And we're in February. Areco's been a surprise package this year, breaking into the first team, playing super often. Still got a couple of question marks over him, but he's been a very, very reliable goal scorer for us in the Europa League. In the Premier League, would like to see a little bit more from him. And as for Roger Rojas, he was very, very slow to get started this year, but he has been playing well lately. You can see in terms of his recent form, he's been stringing together some really, really good performances. He is continuing to improve as well which is extremely exciting. Nine goals to his name in uh, 20 games so far this year. Of course, we did have that very slow start to the year where with the old system, the wider 4-2-3-1, we were averaging kind of one goal a game for our first Premier League game. 
games of the year. That's now changed. I'd like to see him kick on a little bit, but certainly not a cause for concern. And then beyond those players, when you look at the appearances made, you start to realise we have been really relying on the squad as a whole this year. Kenji, of course, a bit of a breakout talent, a household name, people would argue at this point, uh, 20 years old. He is an amazing kind of just versatile defensive option for us. He's putting some good shifts here, there and everywhere. Pietro Pelagata has slowly started to come good. You know, for £15 million, I don't have extremely lofty expectations, but his rating in the Premier League of 7.31 is impressive not perhaps improving as much as i would like but we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt give him some time to continue to kick on he's been filling in for missiak and playing well in terms of players maybe not playing so well i wanted to say ndia it's not a case of he's not been playing well when he's played he's put in good ratings but we've not really used him nearly enough this year somewhat surprised he's not complained about a lack of first team football and we are training him to play right back at the moment to be this ultimate utility man Longer term, I feel like he is just going to end up being a squad player for us. Can I convince him to be a squad player? I can't. Uh, okay, we'll back down. I don't want to make him unhappy. He's probably going to be unhappy about playtime anyway, eventually. And I think another man who falls into this similar bracket where he's a backup player who's good, but I look at the valuation and the performances and there's a bit of a question mark there is Mascara. I feel like when it comes to Europa League ratings, we kind of have to take them a bit with a grain of salt. We've just been stomping teams for fun in this competition, and as a result of it, so many of our players have these really, really high ratings. But it is good to see players like Mascara playing fine in the Europa League. Ultimately, for a backup player like this guy, it's exactly what we need. Now, just as a little reminder, the aim for this year was to get to the latter stages of the Europa League, tick that one off, and the aim for the Premier League was a mid-table finish. Given where we are right now, I want to say I think we can push for a title fight, but I think we do have to be a little bit realistic. If we do get top four this year and if we could do it comfortably, that would be really, really nice as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, that's a little review of the squad. Today we got an okay result against Man City. It wasn't disastrous. It wasn't what we were hoping for. And in the transfer window, I feel like we were oddly productive. Of course, in the end, we only signed two young players in Diego and uh, Erton. And whilst I probably could have gone out and found another just wasn't worth spending big bucks on. What it does mean is with the sale of Ospina, we're going to have a very big transfer budget for the coming summer. That should be quite fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. I was hoping that next episode we'd be coming back for a Carabao Cup final, but of course we bottled it against Arsenal. So the reality is, unless we have some super high stakes Premier League games that I've not envisaged, we're going to be coming back for the Europa League knockout stages next time. Some away days away. Hope you're excited for them and I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm out.